Shalom brothers and sisters. So before we get going into the news stories and everything else and the updates and so forth, there's a lot of smaller things that need to be addressed as well. One of them in the really ugly face of Christianity that's popping up in this whole Israeli conflict, I've seen multiple on various areas, Christians saying, yeah, they crucified Christ, the Jews. So, you know, this is coming to them. It's meant to be. Christ has shaken them off and replaced them with us, and we are now the spiritual Jews. Okay, so besides the replacement theology and all that rubbish, let me just get to the root of the problem here of the common statement going all the way back to Nazi Germany and people who hate Israel and Jews all over the world. They crucified Christ. And I'm going to jump straight into Psalm 22. If you haven't read Psalm 22, brace yourself. <clears throat> when you have the time, because it's emotional to read the events of the crucifixion seen through the eyes of Jesus Christ himself. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John tell you about the crucifixion and the cross that brought us salvation. But Psalm 22 tells you what Jesus experienced from his point of view directly. There's so much in there that is not in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And it's again an example of how the Old Testament and the New Testament are one book given by God and they complement each other perfectly. Psalm 22 verse 16 is what I want to point out specifically. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I'm not even going to get deeply into the rest of those verses because then I'm going to get emotional and this is going to become a longer teaching about the crucifixion. I want to especially focus on verse 16. Dogs have surrounded me. Speaks to the Romans and non-Jews which was a word they used for Gentiles in that day, which is like today when Jews say goyim or goy, they, they're meaning pretty much the same thing, a non-Jewish person, right? So dogs have surrounded me. These are the Romans and the non-Jews that are taking him to crucify him. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me or surrounded me. Here he is speaking of the so-called leaders the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the Sadducees, the religious, that were actually evil men. They were a congregation of the wicked. They were his own people, a wicked congregation, the Jews, that surrounded him, enclosed him. So he is here specifying that there's two groups, Jew and Gentile, that were involved in this crucifixion event. And again, Go read Psalm 22. And if you want, I'll do a video on it at some stage. From there, you're saying, great. Okay, so Jews and Gentiles were responsible for killing Jesus Christ. Wrong. Okay, John 10 verse 18. I'm going to read to you from the New King James Version. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself, and I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. <clears throat> Yet Jesus specifically tells you. We didn't have the power to kill him. You can't kill God. Who do you think you are? He laid down his life as a sacrifice. The perfect sacrifice of the perfect lamb of God. For us to obtain salvation. And become acceptable and approach the throne of God. As his children if we receive him. He had the power to lay it down, and he had the power to take it up again. His power, no power of man, could slay Jesus Christ. So if you didn't know that, know that, and go and do some deep diving into the Word of God. The next time someone says to you, the Jews killed Christ, besides the immediate retort you can give of, the Gentiles killed Christ. No one killed Christ. He laid down his life for you. It's actually a beautiful opportunity to spread the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ and how it can lead you from darkness and chains 
into freedom and salvation light from Jesus Christ our Lord. I hope that helps and gives a bit of clarity because you're going to see a lot more things like this in the days ahead. The more the days passed, sun rising and sun setting, the more anti-Semitic and anti-Israel this world's going to become as we approach Daniel's 70th week. God bless. Keep praying for Israel. Keep praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Keep spreading the gospel. The amazing message of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago. Shalom.